Hi friends, and welcome back to the Science of Music. Today, we will learn how the ear works um, so that you can begin understanding how we hear words and music and how we can process all of this information. You know you have it when you can explain in your own words how the ear works. Um, for class today, you will need some paper. You can use uh, digital paper like Google Classroom. You can use your phone. Um, or you can use an actual piece of paper, um, and then you'll need some colored pencils, crayons, markers, anything that you can draw with and use, and you can use color where you can use pencil or pen, um, or you can use any sort of digital media for, um, for today's class. So let's get started. Um, so today we have a warm up, um, and I want you to take like two to three minutes, um, to, to answer the following question, how do you listen to music? And why is understanding how we listen to music important? Um, so some examples, you can feel the beat through your body, you can listen to the instruments and the lyrics, you can listen to music on a phone, in the car, with the radio, with your ears. So take the next couple of minutes to um, answer these questions and pause the video. Great job. So I hear music by the vibe. Um, I hear music by listening on my phone and in my headphones and in the car. Um, but you can also hear music um, by like the sound waves. So like if the beat is super heavy um, and your music's turned up loud, you can actually feel the vibrations. Um, and this is important because to how we understand music because um, we can also understand how we hear conversations. So like some people hear conversations through the vibrations, um, like for deaf people, uh, if they can't sign or stuff, like you can feel the vibrations. And that's how some deaf people actually listen to music is through the vibrations of music. Um, and then we can, it also helps us understand, understanding how we hear music can help us understand how we hear conversations and how we hear noises all around us, like fire trucks and uh, scanners at the grocery store. So to understand how we hear, we have to understand each part of, of hearing. Um, so does anybody know what this is? I hope so, great job, it is, it is an ear. But can you name any other part of the ear? Or is it just the part that you see on the outside? So the ear is actually more than just the outside. Um, everybody has two ears. Not everybody has two ears. Uh, most people have two ears. Sometimes there's like birth defects or sometimes people lose their ears. Um, so this is our diagram of the ear. I want you to write down on your piece of paper two parts of the ear you have never heard of before. Great job. So we have the outer ear. The ear is broken up into three parts. We have the outer ear, which is this whole blue section right here. We have the middle ear, which is this middle part. And then we have the inner ear. So our outer ear um, is the part that we can see as well as our ear canal. So we have our physical ear that we can see and then we go whoop all the way inside of our ear into the ear canal. And sound waves, which are really just vibrations of air, um, are collected on each side of our head um, in, our ear, in our outer ear and then funneled into the ear canal. And this is like where all the earwax and yucky stuff is that we get out with Q-tips. Um, and then we go into our middle ear um, and we have the eardrum, which that's where the sound, the sound waves make the eardrum vibrate. Um, and the eardrum is super duper sensitive to the sound vibrations in the ear canal that it can, can, that it can detect even the faintest sounds as well as replicating even the most complex of the sound vibrations. The eardrum vibrations caused by the sound waves move the chain of tiny bones, so like the, the mollusk and the incus and the stapes, in the middle of the ear transferring the sound vibrations into the, in the cochlea of the inner ear. So pretty much what the inner ear does is it takes everything that we hear and it filters it. Um, and so then like the incus and the mollusk and the stapes 
are other part are parts of the ear that just end up moving around a little bit with the sound vibrations, but they're not too important when it comes to listening to music. Uh, and then we move to our inner ear, and this this has a bunch of big big medical words, um, but the most important one here is the is the cochlea because it has high fibers where it separates the pitches of sound waves so we can hear if something is in a high register or in a low register. So remarkably, the, the cochlea um, has little hair cells that are tuned to respond to different sounds based on their pitch or the frequency. So high pitched sounds will stimulate the hairs, whereas low pitched sounds um, will just kind of let it relax. So now that we know all of that, we are going to do a stimulation activity. So I'm going to play a series of pitches for you, and I want you to write down if you think it is going to stimulate or relax your cochlea hairs. If you cannot hear the pitch, that is totally okay. It might be too high, and maybe your, your, your cochlea won't be stimulated, or maybe there's just going to be an issue with the uh, transfer because of it being a video. But anyways, it is okay. Remember, to stimulate the hairs, it will be if the pitch is really, really high. And to relax the hairs will be if it's super duper low. So let's get started. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. And lastly, number eight. Great job. Do you feel like you stimulated your cochlea hairs? Did you hear all of the sounds? Again, it's totally okay if you didn't. Um, some of them were super duper low and then some of them were super duper high and I couldn't even hear them and I was playing for them for you. Um, so for homework tonight, I would like you to draw your own version of the ear and its parts. Why are we doing this? Well, it'll make sure that you understood everything that we did today, but I want you to try to do it without looking at our diagram. Um, and I want you to be as creative as you want. It can be realistic. You can draw it with like skin tones and what you think the colors of the inner parts of the ear look like. Um, you can also do um, like different shapes and different colors, but if you change it, you got to write down why you changed it and why you think um, it's a different shape than the one in our diagram. And after you're, after you're done, go back and look at our diagram. See how much you remembered. See if you remembered all those big names. And also see if you could name all of the parts. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys on the next one.